Coming up today on That LTD Life, I'll be testing out AnyChat. This is a live chat widget you can put on your website to engage with your website's visitors. It's currently available for a lifetime deal at AppSumo. This is very similar to the tool I reviewed just last week called Charla. In fact, many of you requested that I review AnyChat, so here we are. Now, I thought Charla was super cheap. AnyChat says, hold my beer, it's only 29 bucks. And much like Charla, it likes the word unlimited. You get unlimited everything on every single plan. The only exception is the number of chat agents that you can have. So on tier one, it's five chat agents. On tier two, it is 10 chat agents, but you get 15 agency client accounts included. So that's a nice touch. And then on tier three, everything goes out the window. It's unlimited everything, unlimited agents, unlimited clients, and you even get white label and your own domain. In my opinion, this is concerningly low. It should be priced more like three, four, five, six hundred dollars for an unlimited agency. To have it all for 87 bucks is honestly a little bit frightening. Raise the prices, please. Like if I'm gonna invest in this tool, I want you guys to stick around. Let me give you a little bit more cash. 89 bucks is not gonna get you through the year. Now, any chat, just like Charla, is not an AppSumo Select deal, which means it doesn't get the AppSumo We've Got Your Back guarantee. So that doesn't mean you can't buy it, but just be aware there's a little bit more risk with a tool that's not part of the AppSumo Select program. All right, so this is the Charla dashboard, and I'm gonna show you around the entire tool in just a moment. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Dave, and I review lifetime deals every single day of the week. This is not a sponsored video. I'm simply going to be showing you the tool and telling you what I like and what I dislike. At the end of the video, I'll give it a score from zero to 10. That's mostly for fun. I hope you watch the screen recording and you can decide for yourself if it's a good fit for your business. If you wanna support my content, you could consider using the AppSumo affiliate link in my description. That way I can continue to make these lifetime deal reviews every day of the week. All right, onward to AnyChat. Okay, so let's get started with AnyChat by doing the most obvious thing, getting the chat widget on our website. That way you can see how it might compare to Charla, which by the way, if you've not seen that video, I'm gonna be referencing it throughout this one. So probably pause now, go watch the Charla video and then come back here and you can see how the two tools compare. So in AnyChat on the dashboard, what you want to do is add a widget for every single website that you're going to be managing. So you just click up here, add widget, give it a name and then enter in the domain where it will display. You can enter in more than one domain, but every domain will need to specify whether it's HTTP or HTTPS. You can also allow it for a whitelist. So you toggle this on and only the whitelisted domains will be allowed to run the chatbot. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and save this. So now I've got the widget I just created here, CA2. You might notice it also says no channels set. Now what is a channel and why do I want to set one? To help explain that, let me show you this widget right here that I've already created and deployed on our website, clientamp.com. So here is our website, and you might notice in the lower right-hand corner, we've got a little chat widget. If I click on it, I see my channels. I've added some social media, I added live human chat support, and I also added a form here so that people can email us if they don't want to contact us via the live chat. So let's go ahead and set up some channels for the widget that we just created. To do this, we go over to settings and then choose channels. And then you wanna make sure you've got the widget that you're intending to work on selected. So I can choose the little drop down up here and I'll go to CA2. Notice there are going to be no channels here, so I'll create one. And I've got a lot of options. I can connect up a bunch of different social media platforms. So this section here are social media messengers. And then down below we have social media profiles. So these will just link out to your actual profiles to ask you to you know, follow a channel or something like that. Then of course, we've got the live chat widget. This is something that is not turned on by default. So you'll need to make sure that you actually enable it if you want live chat because any chat, even though it sounds like it's mainly for live chat, I really don't think they see themselves that way. The more I use the tool, it's kind of just like, they're a little thing that lives in the corner and it can really do anything that you want. As we continue to see here, we've got forms and then other, which is basically anything else you can think of, a custom link, a click to email, a click to call, a click to SMS. So this would be a really great option if you're you know, managing a lot of local businesses that you want people to be able to text or place phone calls with very simply, you know, having a little widget in the corner, clicking that, and then it makes it very easy for people to be able to call. If these options have not been enough for you, you can choose a custom pop-up, an iframe pop-up, a pop-up image, or custom JS. 
Now, each channel also has customization available to it in the form of visual customization, but also visibility customization. So let me explain how this might be useful. Let's say you're available for live chat from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. After that, you'd prefer if people fill out a form and email you. So what you could do is turn on a live chat widget and we'll give this name like chat. Then over in the visibility section, we will toggle off the always display this item option and set your hours over here for when you have agents available. So I've just set the live chat to be available from nine until five. And then I've got the option to do something if the item is not available. So I can hide the item, display an offline badge, make the item disabled or display an offline badge and make the item disabled. Now, alternatively, I want to add in that contact form so that if people are seeing that chat is not available, well, then they can fill out the contact form. So to do this, I would just click this button down here and add an additional widget in. So there are three forms that come with any chat out of the gates. It's the callback form, the email form, and the offline form, but you can add as many as you like. So rather than adding another one in here, which you know I could do, I can click on this and just set the visibility to be kind of the opposite of my live chat, right? I'd go in here and set the hours, but rather than do that, let's actually go ahead and add a new form that is right over here under forms. So I'm still in settings, but rather than going to channels, I'm going to go up to forms. And here are the three forms that they give you to add a new one. Just click down here and then go ahead and fill out the little builder to create the form that you want. Now, when you're all done setting up your channels, you want to deploy this on your website. To do that, we click on the little code icon over here and it gives us a bit of script that we can embed on our website. Now for running WordPress, PrestaShop or OpenCart, I believe there are plugins available for those platforms. And I think there's a Shopify one coming. But otherwise, you can just go ahead and copy and paste this into your header and footer plugin. Or if you have like a code injection part of your site, you would want to put it there. Now, it's worth noting that the default option here is the menu button widget, which is what I showed you a moment ago. It's this thing where you click and you get a menu of different buttons that you can use. But maybe you don't want to use this. Maybe you want it to just go right to live chat. Well, there is a second option for that. It's right here. If I click on that. Well, now I've got the live chat widget. I can easily just copy and paste this instead of the other one. They also have a live chat direct link right here. So if you don't want to use the widget at all on your website, you could just link directly over to the chat and use whatever button you'd like. And the last option in the widget script code is the admin widget. I like this idea. So the concept is that you embed this on your website, just like you did any of the other two that we just mentioned, except this is only for administrators. That way, when you're logged in, you can actually see other chats going on. You don't have to log into the any chat platform itself. You can handle everything right here on your website or right there on your website, not right here. Now, it is important that you only put this code on the admin area and not anywhere public facing. Otherwise, they could get access to your API key and that would be bad news. And furthermore, you don't even need to use this widget if you use their WordPress, press the shop or open cart plugins. Okay, so that is how we get live chat up and running on our website. Now, one thing you might notice if you're comparing Charla to any chat is that Charla was really simple and easy to get up and running, but it didn't have very many deep features. Well, that is not the case for any chat. You can basically do anything you want. It is definitely a power user type of tool. One of the first things I did when I logged into my AnyChat account for the first time was go over to integrations here. And I noticed right away that they integrate with the Perfect CRM. That is a self-hosted tool that is extremely customizable and looks honestly a lot like AnyChat. So it made perfect sense to me that, okay, this is gonna be a tool for real power users. Now, right below the Perfect CRM, you might notice they also have an integration with ChatGPT. That's actually kind of overstating. It's not ChatGPT like your own ChatGPT account. It's gonna be the OpenAI API key. So you can go ahead and integrate right here and then use their AI assistant to help make your chats go a little bit smoother. So you can create an assistant on this screen by just clicking on the plus button right here. I already have one, so I'm gonna edit it. Essentially, all you're going to do is give the assistant a name, choose which model you want to use, and then you can upload files, include specific URLs on your website, or even train it via the built-in AnyChat knowledge base. Now, it's worth noting that the URLs need to be entered in individually. It simply cannot scrape your entire website. So if you've got a lot of URLs, definitely settle in for the night, get clicking that plus button and paste them away. 
being able to load in a sitemap or even just to export a CSV from one sitemap and then import it into the tool definitely would make life a lot easier. But right now it's a copy and paste one URL at a time scenario. When live chat is actually happening on your website, it's really easy to communicate with the visitor. You just go over to the chat section right here and then go ahead and click on it. I was sending myself some messages earlier on. You can see what it looks like. So we can see the main chat right here. There is a note section so you can leave notes about yourself. It's a pretty small area and they are hidden unless you actually think to click on notes, but uh, that is an option. And then we can also leave comments. So notes, I believe, are just for your notes for you and your team. And then comments would be like a chat that happens between your and you and your team about this actual interaction. So let's leave a comment. So I've entered in the comment. I'm going to go ahead and submit it. And you can see here the comment shows up in line with the rest of the actual conversation, whereas the note just lives right down here. Now, over on the right hand sidebar, we can see a little bit more information about who we're chatting with. We'll get information like their time zone, their IP address, and the type of device they're on. You can easily ban a visitor if they are harassing you, and you can even open up a support ticket or a task right from the chat itself. To do that, just click right up here where it says create and choose between ticket, task, or meeting. Yeah, that's right. You can set up meetings right inside of this app. It's not as cool as it sounds, but it's interesting that it's here. Let's try that. So if I click on meeting, I can see meetings that already exist, which I actually was just trying this out earlier. And I set up a Google Meet meeting with this contact. Now, if I wanted to create another one, I can simply hit create a meeting right here. I'll enter in some information like who's going to be there, what the location is. So this time we'll do Zoom. I can add in my Zoom link, choose the start date and the duration, then give the meeting a title and go ahead and hit save. Now, it doesn't actually connect to any of these platforms. It just shows up in your list of meetings as kind of like a reminder that you've got a meeting. So cool, but it could be so much better if you actually integrated with the meeting software itself. There's also this button over here that says connect chat flow. This is kind of like a old Facebook bot that you might want to run in front of your actual human communication. You can see it's over here under chat flows. And then we can go ahead and create our own chat flow here or save a chat flow as a template. I kind of wish they gave us some templates to start with, to maybe give us some ideas for how to utilize these. Because when you open up the builder, it is complex. Like I mentioned, this is a power user tool. So essentially the way it works is you're taken into this flow builder where you can set up triggers and events that happen based on certain triggers to automate the chat process a little bit. Overall, the interface is okay, but if I add like a new element, let's say invite chat agent, and I click it, you notice it kind of puts it over existing ones. And then sometimes when you try to move stuff, it's got like multiple things selected and it kind of, it just can be a little bit difficult to maneuver. It's not necessarily my favorite flow builder and it could do for a little bit more guidance in the actual application. There is some documentation to check out, but Overall, it's probably difficulty level seven or eight out of 10. As for the rest of the website, we've got a visitor section where we can see any recent visitors. I'm not gonna show you because it does also display IP addresses. So out of the sake of privacy for people, I'll just obscure that. Then we've also got our contact section over here where it actually just shows you anybody who is engaged to the point that they've gone from just being a visitor to the site to actually being a contact. And you can also kind of use this like a CRM, like you can put contacts into organizations. So I just created an organization here. I can open this up and start to add people to it. So here's a contact section. I can go ahead and add visitor and hit save. Now, both the contacts and the organizations have some more features than some of the CRMs I've recently reviewed. Like for example, if I open up this contact, I can see all of the relevant information here. I can leave notes about the contact. I can see recent chats and form fills. I can also see any open support tickets or tasks or meetings they have set up. The tickets are more like a help desk and you can even connect your own custom SMTP server as well as set up an IMAP connection for incoming emails to create tickets from emails. That's done over in the settings, but before I show you that, let's check out what a ticket looks like. So I just created this kind of demo one here. You can see we've got some information on the left and then over to the right, we have how we're actually working on it. One thing of note is it actually allows for attachments. So if you need to upload files for, I believe this works for tasks as well. If you've got tasks that you're doing, yeah, there's an attachment section. You can go ahead and just attach them right there. And that way they'll still be connected back to your contact. 
Okay, so as far as email settings, that's done under settings and then email settings. I did connect up my own SMTP server, sent out a test message to make sure it worked and it was flawless. If you wanted to take incoming messages, you need to set up an IMAP connection, which I did not test. So I'm just going to trust that it works as well as the SMTP connection. If this is all confusing, SMTP is outgoing mail, sending mails out, notifications, things like that. IMAP connection is going to be incoming mail. So that'd be people creating new tickets via email rather than going to your website and opening up the widget. Remember a few minutes ago, I mentioned that I don't think any chat sees themselves as a live chat platform. And that is further explained right over here under live chat integrations. Now, of course, they've got their own live chat, but you can connect up any number of actual chat bots from uh, social media networks and then chat with people there. So it's kind of a you know, all in one unified inbox where you can reply to people on Messenger or WhatsApp right from your own AnyChat interface. So that's live chat integrations. It's connecting up to other platforms, but there's also live chats over here under widget settings, which allows you to choose a different provider for your own local live chat. So if you don't want to use their built in option, you can use talk to or crisp. I think that's smart because it allows any chat to act as this intermediary to other platforms. So you can still use all of their features, but continue to use a platform you're comfortable with like talk to or crisp, which both have, I would guess millions of users at this point. Okay. Let's talk aesthetics because I do feel like any chats appearance is a little bit subpar when compared to Charla, especially for the end user, the back end, I don't really care about so much. But if we look at the channels here, we do have a lot of customization op options. You can open this up and under customization, you can choose any icon that you like and even set the color of that icon. And for the chat widget itself, which you see preview down here in green, there are a lot of different options as well. So we can customize this entirely differently on desktop and mobile. And by the way, yeah, you can turn it off on mobile if you don't want it visible, clogging up the precious real estate of uh, screen sizes on mobile. That's entirely doable, different screen for that. but. Uh, for right here, let's go ahead and just change the color. So I'm going to make it this yellow color. We have four different sizes for the button. We've got huge, which is really huge, all the way down to small, which is probably too small. The button mode is set to menu by default, but you can choose between callback only, which should display that callback form, as well as single channel if you wanted to specify a particular mode to go into. For the icon itself, the little chat widget, you can specify that right over here, choosing one of their built-in SVGs or uploading your own. And AnyChat also does a really good job of integrating with other platforms. You can see they've got an Android app as well as an iOS app. I already mentioned they've got tools to easily integrate with PrestaShop, OpenCart, and WordPress, but you can see a bunch of other platforms are planned for the future as well, including Shopify, Wix, Joomla, and Magento. Overall, the knowledge base builder is fine. I don't like it as much as I did Charla just because I love the Laxical editor so much. Uh, and this has kind of more of an old school page builder type of feel to it. So here is my title, my subtitle, and then I could go ahead and add in little elements here, headers, paragraphs, alerts, images, links, code, embed, or divider. So that is AnyChat. It's definitely more of a power user tool than something like Charla but I could see both existing and being right for the right type of person. For me, I would probably personally lean toward any chat, but I do like the visuals of Charla a lot more. Overall, at these prices, you might wanna just pick up both to give yourself a bit of an insurance policy. It's not something I've ever recommended on this channel, but these are so darn cheap and so darn generous that it does make me a little bit concerned. Overall, final score, I'm gonna give any chat an 8.3 out of 10. I think it is equally as good as Charla, just with a different intended audience. That's gonna do it for this video. If you like the content, make sure you hit that like button. Leave me a comment down below, even just for the algorithm. And don't forget to use my AppSumo link when making a purchase. Thank you for watching. My name is Dave, and I'll see you in the next review.